I've been playing Mansions of Madness a lot lately. You can see some of my playthroughs on this channel. It's a really fun game, full of atmosphere and intrigue and Lovecraftian horror, but it's also a game that inspires a lot of thought about strategy versus roleplay. In a tabletop roleplaying game like Tales of the Valiant or Pathfinder or Shadowrun or whatever, you often make up a strategy based on how you think your character would approach a problem. In a board game like Mansions of Madness or even a war game like Warhammer 40,000, your strategy is mostly predefined. You know your goal, you can safely assume that everyone that's not you is bad and must be eliminated. You only have a given budget of action actions, so every action counts. There's no time for distraction or character nuance. If you waste an action doing something suboptimal for the game, because that's what your character would do, then you lose the game. That might suggest to you that there's no room for roleplay in a strategy game, but I think that's not the case. Instead, I think that in a strategy game, you just have to roleplay in reverse. When you play a tabletop role-playing game, the main game loop is you declare what you intend to do and then the consequences of your action is calculated. During an in-game social situation, the consequences are how people react to you. You do something that a non-player character appreciates and you're rewarded. You do something that they don't appreciate and you're shunned or punished or you've made an enemy or you just don't get the reward, whatever. During in-game skill tests, or combat, consequences are determined by a dice roll. Roll a certain number, get rewarded. Roll under a certain number, and bad things happen. In both scenarios, you're trying something and then learning whether you were successful or not. So now imagine reversing the tabletop roleplay loop. Imagine that instead of trying something and then learning the result, you learn the result first, and then explain to yourself and your fellow gamers what happened and why. That's how roleplay in a war game or a strategy board game can happen and it's super easy. First, you move your player token and you take your action and then something happens and then you justify how such a thing, however unlikely given the personalities or equipment involved, could possibly occur in the game world. Here's an example. In Mansions of Madness, spells are pretty dangerous. Suppose you encounter a book in a library containing an arcane script. If you were roleplaying in the traditional sense, then your character would probably choose not to read the script, especially if your character has ever tried to cast a spell in this game before. But you didn't buy Mansions of Madness to not engage with the game, so you decide to roleplay in reverse. You read the script. If the script turns out to summon a deep one that immediately attacks you and your fellow investigators, then you explain to the group that your character felt compelled to read the script. It was as if though an alien force had seized control of your mind. Or maybe your character is addicted to spellcasting. You know it's harmful, you know it hurts those you care about, but you can't help yourself. Or maybe your character just wasn't thinking, or they're overtired, or they're desperate and just felt like it was worth a shot. If the script turns out to be a boost, Maybe it increases your understanding of the threat. Maybe it grants you a clue token or a beneficial card. Then the story could be different. Maybe your character had seen this kind of script before and understood that it released positive forces. Or maybe your character is impossibly optimistic and just hoped for the best even when there was no reason to believe that the strange script could be helpful. Or maybe the story hasn't changed at all. Maybe your character is still addicted to spell casting and it just happened this time to prove beneficial. The possibilities are endless, and the point is that your motivation is generated from the result rather than the other way around. You can use the same technique in war games. Suppose your favorite soldier rushes into an obvious trap, or attacks an impossible foe, or uncharacteristically runs for cover when they should be standing fast. When your gamble as a player pays off, you can explain it as bravery, or a lust for war, or inquenchable thirst for blood or intuition or impossible strategic insight. When your gamble goes wrong and your soldier falls, then you've got to make up the story to account for that instead. Most of us tabletop role players actually do this compulsively when we roll especially poorly. I can't count the number of times a gamer in one of my groups has rolled for stealth and gotten a natural one and on the behalf of the game master just declares, and I kick a can and trip over a rake. Obviously before the roll was made, that wasn't what that player had 
Todd had in mind. The player imagined a character was going to move fluidly and silently through the shadows, but the dice provided a different story. Uh, they forced a different story. Dice don't talk though, so the player steps in and clarifies what actually happened. That's role-playing in reverse. It's a natural reaction to how a game is going. I think the key is to take ownership of it and talk it out. Instead of feeling like a game is going poorly because your dice hate you, take the opportunity to craft a cool story out of the hand that fate has dealt you. It's a fulfilling trick. Even after losing a game, you've experienced a compelling and surprising story, no matter what happens. Having to invent reasons for unexpected or unlikely game events forces you to exercise creativity in ways that you probably can't anticipate. Who knew that your most valuable soldier had been swapped out with their evil twin, determined to sabotage the mission? And how nice is it that the vapid beauty queen was secretly an avid antiquarian all along? Next time you feel like role-playing but the game you're playing refuses to make room for it, just tack it on at the end of each turn and see what happens. It might just add a whole new dimension to the experience. It does for me. Give it a try. Thanks for watching.